All right, guys, so over in the UK, apparently this is summer. Just today, today only, next week is going to rain, just like the whole rest of the last five months. Anyway, seeing as it's nice, I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk to you about speaker boxes and specifically T-line boxes because there's a lot of stuff on YouTube and showing T-line boxes and I've done quite a few T-line boxes but it's very difficult for somebody who doesn't understand T-line to just get a rough idea of how it works and there's not a lot of simple information about it on the web um, and there's not a lot of YouTube videos about it either so I thought I'd take the time to, to um, discuss the three main types of speaker boxes and how they differ from one another. Now, the first type of box I'm going to talk about is a sealed box which is basically acting like a drum. So the drum has a skin which moves and a cabinet and now the lowest note a drum can play is determined by the size of the drum and the skin, how tightly you tune the skin. And that's basically like a sealed box but a sealed box is determined by again the size of the box and mainly the, the resonant frequency of the driver you use. The bigger driver you use, generally the lower resonance frequency it has so the lower notes you can hear. So the best sort of speakers for sealed boxes are ones with a very low resonant frequency and that have a soft movement so they can make some pressure inside the box and not work against themselves, they're just working against the air pressure. Um, so that's sealed. Um, you get very nice deep punchy bass if you use the right driver and it's a very clean soft sound because you haven't got any air chuffing, it's not ported, there's little resonance if you get the box right. So yeah, it's a good option for sound quality. Now a ported box is different. A ported box is a bit like this. I'll explain why. A ported box uses a thin tube and the length and the width of the tube and the size of the box designates the lowest frequency it can play. So, like this. What's actually happening to create that note is as the air from my mouth rushes over the top of the bottle, the rushing air actually creates suction in the bottle and sucks air out to match to follow the air that's going over the top of it. Now, because the air's been sucked out, it's creating like a mini vacuum inside here, and the mini vacuum then draws more air in. So by blowing over the top, you have a very, very fast repetition of in, out, in, out of air inside here, which is basically what's creating a sound wave, moving air in, out, in, out, making a sound wave. Now, the note that that plays is determined on the size of the box, mainly. There you go, so three different notes, same port, different size box. And it's also determined by the length of this, the port, and the width of it. Now the way that a speaker does this is the speaker in the box moves air and forces it very quickly out the port, in and out, which is basically what's happening by blowing over the top of this bottle. So if I had a speaker in here, then the speaker would be moving air, creating air pressure in here and forcing it in and out of this tube. And so the lowest note would again be defined by the size of this and also by the length and width of this here. So that's ported. Good for SPL, good for loud bass. Um, it does have peaks and troughs in the frequency response because you have different resonances going on, etc. So it's, it's used in the SPL world, um, but less for SQ, less for sound quality. Now a T-line box, although many T-line boxes look very similar to ported boxes online and when you see designs, is actually a completely different story. A T-line box is very similar to a musical instrument. Now, in a musical instrument, like a saxophone, to create a note, you have a little piece of wood that vibrates backwards and forwards very, very fast. Now the piece of wood on its own obviously doesn't sound particularly good. <laughs> this is very high pitched and squeaky, not much going on there. As soon as you attach this piece of wood and you start making more length to the line or to the tube if you like, it gets lower until with a saxophone you attach it to the full length of the line to create the lowest note on the saxophone which is like so. Now how that's working is rather than like a ported or sealed box, the lowest note is actually determined by the wavelength, the actual length of the sound frequency. And that is done on the saxophone by changing the length of the line. So a saxophone has valves, and by pushing the valves, you're making the tube longer and longer and longer. Now in a wood instrument, the reed can't actually change the frequency at which it vibrates. It's not like a speaker. Speakers can. Speakers can move at different frequencies, uh, but this reed can't. So in order to play different notes on a saxophone, rather than changing the rate at which this vibrates at, you have to change the physical length of the line. Now in a T-line box, you build the box as long as you want the lowest frequency to be played. So for example, in a subwoofer application, 
a 30 hertz uh, tuned box, which is kind of a very popular tuning frequency, would be over 400 inches long. That's the 30 hertz wavelength is actually about is, is 400 and 452 inches long, which is a hell of a massive box. Um, so that's in order to play 30 hertz, you need a box that long. And because speakers can change the rate at which they vibrate, you haven't got to have valves on the box that change continuously changing the length of the box because the speaker does that for you. The length just defines the lowest note it can play, and any notes above that are then made up as resonance inside the box. Now you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, I've seen 30 hertz tuned t line boxes and they're nowhere near as big as that. What I've realized is that you can actually have a box that's tuned to 30 hertz without using the full 30 hertz frequency. So when you look at a frequency, it's an up and a down and then back to the middle again. Like a third, just a one, that's one cycle. Now you can actually have that frequency resonate at a quarter of the length. So just from the center, to the peak. So rather than going center, peak, center, down, center, you actually only make use of the first quarter of the wavelength and that will still create the frequency, the 30 hertz frequency. Uh, and when you divide that by four, the box would then, rather than having to be 452 inches long, would only have to be 113 inches long, which is still a pretty big box, which is why you'll find that in T-line subwoofers and things like that, you have a square box that has a folded line or a folded tube in the box that equates to the length the desired frequency that the guys use the guys designed it for so t line boxes used for very high end hi-fi places where box size is irrelevant um, places where you want a subwoofer that basically hits very very low but yet hits other notes perfectly as well and has a very shallow roll off now some t line boxes you'll see won't necessarily be the same length all the way through just like the saxophone you see the length of the the width of it is actually getting bigger as you go along. Now that's very similar to a horn. The perfect T-line would be the same width throughout the line with, and the width of the line will be exactly the same as the speaker. So you just basically have a tube which is the same size as the speaker diameter and then the length of a quarter wavelength of your wave that you want the lowest note to hit. Now depending on your application, you may want the line to get thinner as it goes on or to get wider. For sound quality and for frequency response and punchiness etc generally you tend to taper the line inwards and that reduces spl slightly reduces your the, the volume the loudness of the box but you get less resonance and it makes the frequencies that are produced a lot flatter a lot more punchy etc if you expand the line then the waves actually the the amplitude gets bigger as it goes down the line so if you can see the the amplitude of the wavelength in here will start off small and then as it gets down the line, it's, the amplitude is getting bigger, yeah? Um, now what it tends to do is that tends to make the sound a lot louder. So subwoofers, um, you can make very, very loud uh, transmission line subwoofers using this, this design. But it tends to induce a little bit more resonance because the box is getting bigger, so then you start getting frequencies made up along that way of the line rather than that way. Um, and it tends to be slightly less punchy and it can sound hollow if you make it too wide. Now another thing you'll find in T-line boxes is sometimes in order to make the box smaller in a smaller application you can stuff the box with acoustic wadding which in a sense slows down the speed of sound inside the box which slows down the rate at which the air sets up a standing wave in the box. So say you have, you want 30 hertz and you've got to have 30 hertz but you have a smaller size, the box just can't fit in your application. So you would make the T-Line box a little wider with a slightly wider line and then you stuff the inside of the line progressively with different thickness of acoustic wadding until you get right to the end where it's the thickest and that slows down the, the actual speed of sound if you like in the box and therefore compresses the 30 hertz wavelength so that you still get 30 hertz but in a smaller size so your box will be built with a length that say will equate to 45 hertz get the stuffing right and you'll be able to hit a perfect 30 hertz with the stuffing and it'll also be a nice a softer sound and less resonance and you know more punchy i'd love to try and see what it would be like to put a small speaker at the top of this actually and close all the valves and see how it performs in a sort of horn expanding t-line box like this that might be a next video. And the reason the T-Lines are popular is because you don't necessarily need a massive driver to create the deep low notes that you want to hit. Rather than a ported box or sealed box, sealed needs a big driver for the low resonant frequency, a ported box needs a 
bigger driver in order to, to create the amount of air pressure needed for 30 hertz and the, the size of the box needed and everything you need a bigger driver more powerful driver but with t-lines you can have very small speakers and because the speakers the t-lines just determined on how the sound wave is set up you can use very small speakers and still um, get very very low notes because you don't need a lot of pressure it's not about sound air pressure it's not about um, the resonance of the driver so it's, it's more about the actual length of the box and the characteristics the way that you've designed it so you can get 30 hertz 25 hertz even in the right room um, and with the right driver from tiny tiny subs sort of six inch eight inch subs you can get a very low very clean sounding bass from T-lines are less popular in uh, car audio um, with big subs and for SPL competitions because in order to make the most of a T-line box for a 12 or 15 inch sub, the box would have to be massive, like I'm talking seriously big, because the ideal width of the line is roughly the width of the woofer itself. So you think about having a 113 inch um, folded, even folded um, line in a car for a 12 or 15 inch sub, that's going to be a big ass box. So that's just a very basic explanation as to how T-lines differ from sealed boxes and ported boxes where sealed is like a drum using the resonant frequency of the driver and the size of the box. Ported is using chuffing, basically a, a Helms-Holtz um, box where the air movement in the port going backwards and forwards is creating the sound wave, therefore defining the lowest note. And where T-line is actually using the length of the wave and the length of the box to build a standing wave to determine your lowest note. Now, I'm by no means a professional on this, I'm just a very enthusiastic hobbyist that's done a lot of research on the web and just applied basic physics of sound to defining these three different speaker boxes. If you've got anything you want to add, if you think that I've made any mistakes in what I've said, then by all means add some comments and just say what you feel, say what you think, see how this has influenced your own thoughts on speaker design and speaker boxes. Yeah, let me know what you think. So cheers guys, I'm going to enjoy the sun whilst it lasts.